that's very been very helpful in my healing and realizing like a lot of the things I feel a lot of shame about are just because I was never accepted as myself anywhere throughout my whole twenties. And I was a full-time musician, like my life should have been like fabulous. Like most people, I've spent my entire life listening to pop songs that have told me I will be saved by romantic love. Then last year, I was introduced to the music of Self Esteem, who writes pop songs that tell me I don't need to be saved at all. Her albums, Compliments, Please and Prioritise Pleasure will change the way you listen to music, if they haven't already. Would you please welcome to Mad World, Self Esteem, who is also goes by the name of Rebecca. Yes. L- L- Rebecca Lucy Taylor. Uh-huh. Welcome, Rebecca. Hello, thank you. I love that. Is that all I right? I got a small goosebump. Did you? Yeah, I'm still so excited by myself. That when <laughs> when I'm, someone I'm, says something like that, I'm like, oh, I have changed music. <laughs> you've changed. You've changed. And I'm like, oh. <laughs> I wonder um, when I'll get like blasé about it, but thank you. That when I write up this podcast into a piece, it'll be like the woman who's changed music. Thank you. Agreed. Yeah. And so, <laughs> oh, I can send you a print out of it. You thank can have you. framed or something. Yeah, yeah. Look, that's all I need. That's, okay. that's the validation I need. Well, let's talk a lot about validation. I've got to ask you. The first question we ask everybody on this podcast is, "How are you really <laughs> right now?" Do you know what? Me and Mel have just had lunch, and I, Mel, who. Does my what's your official title? You TV and podcast, and so Mel's known me for a decade now, and I worry because everything from outwardly looks like amazing, doesn't it, and like great, yeah. but I'm actually like very burnt out and going insane. But you feel like you can't complain because of course I can't. I don't want to complain, but I sit and whinged with Mel for an hour, so I've kind of got it out my system, and I'm now realizing my life's fucking brilliant, and I am so happy, I'm so lucky, but. I just wish I had a bit more time soon been washing and stuff. I mean, this is a weird point where, like, I'm doing really well and fame and things like that aren't important. That's not the goal, but, like, success is. But I'm not quite successful enough to, like, have someone do my washing, and that's, <laughs> that's where I'm at. But why is it that, like, this is the interesting thing, isn't it, that success now, I feel, for so many of us, requires, it always seems to come hand in hand with some form of burnout. Yeah, well, I just said, I was just with Jodie Harsh. I was like, how do you do it? And she was like, I'm knackered, babes. Like, everyone, like every famous, successful person I meet now, I go, how are you doing it? And everyone's knackered. You must be knackered. I'm totally, yeah. I'm, I'm mostly, usually when I'm not recording a podcast, I'm crying. Yeah, but this is and I okay. don't want it to be like that. <laughs> I, I, but for me, I think it, it's maybe just uh, said this before, but I've, for over 10 years was waving going hello look at me I'm clever and, and, I'm, and what I'm doing is good no fuck I looked my way and now everyone is and I have gone okay 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 to everyone and the fallout from that is you know I feel very insane <laughs> but I'm really glad that you said that because I think we spend so long with social media like you you nailed this where you said you know from the outside it all looks amazing mm. like we have this huge tendency now to compare because of social media but also just because that's what we do isn't it as humans is comparing our insides mm. with other people's outsides mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. which is just like yeah doesn't a completely work. fruitless enterprise like it's just not how yeah every day there's a bigger penny falling on my head going like oh right because I've always been outside of this sort of being a successful music artist and always been like why not me or about everything all the time and I suppose now in so many ways I'm getting exactly what I've always wanted and it's uh, sort of horrible in a new way (laughs) but I think I think I'll be all right I think I'll adapt and I'm so glad I'm 35 when it's happening you know because if I was 25 and this was happening I'd be I don't know I don't think I'd be sat here being able to string a sentence together with you. So. I would be, if I was successful as you at 25, I would be just, I wouldn't be sitting here, co- no, I'd be like or taking drugs, drinking yeah, heavily. Yeah. I mean, I was doing that at 25 yeah. anyway. <laughs> <laughs> and I wasn't successful. So, uh, you know, I want to talk about your story. Okay. Okay. <laughs> so far... So you kind of hinted at it. You're 35 now. That also I want to talk about later. But I've got I've got a lot of questions for you. Just just FYI, so Great. I you've got a lot I'm of time. Yeah, I'm ready. <laughs> so you were in you were in an indie band mm-hmm. for a long time called Slow Club, mm-hmm. and it's safe to say from what I've read, it wasn't your vibe. Well, <laughs> it 
was my vibe, you know, when we met. But when you meet at 16, do you still want to make that music two years later, five years later, 10 years later? Absolutely not. And, and I suppose it was like the people I made music with were stayed in a lane that they wanted to be in. And I, my 20s were just such a mess of me being like, why aren't I like these people? Why don't I want the same things? If I try hard enough, maybe I will. And musically as well, artistically, like, why do I want to do all these things? That's not cool. What is cool is what everyone else thinks is cool. I was kind of unlucky. I think I never met my tribe or whatever. I ne only just now do I feel accepted socially, romantically, family, like everything. Like, I just was an outsider and I felt like if I tried hard enough, I wouldn't be an outsider. Turns out that's not true, is it? But yeah, it was, it was pretty miserable but no one's fault really it's just the look of the draw and part of the journey I guess that's why self-esteem sounds like it does and I hate saying that though because I wish I was 25 in a way because it'd be easier to like me <laughs> when I do music videos I love that you're not 25 you know, no, but also I, I love that I love no I don't love I hate that 35 is considered old no. in the kind of record industry I've just got an audition brief through Mother of Two I'm like Really? Yeah. I was like, I can't, I just don't think I should even try and do that. I have no, I, I've not mothered anything. What is this acting? Yeah, I'm trying to do an acting pivot. Oh. You know, like Gaga. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Totally I'm very like Gaga. <laughs> but that mother of two, but that's th like tw 35, because I read that like you were the you, one of the oldest people ever to be nominated for mm. Best New Artist <laughs> yeah. at the Brits. Yeah. And 35 is not, no, it's I not know. old. It takes a lot of my brain power to not indulge in the idea that I am past it when I'm about to go on stage and I'm wearing an outfit and I feel stupid or humiliated or fucking hell you idiot what are you doing you're too old to do this that feeling is like horrible but it's also like I've just trained myself to go and that's why you must <laughs> and with it with everything with what I'm doing it's like my wiring is oh god What's she doing? Look at her. What a, what a mess. Or she's too old to be doing that. Or, you know, that's what the voice I hear. But that's the voice I go, OK, thank you. That means I'm going <laughs> to. I love it. I love, like, right now, no, obviously it's a podcast. You can't see it. But you're wearing, like, this fucking amazing <laughs> jumpsuit, with which is, like, leopard print. Hmm. And, like, amazing jewels and Crocs, which I'm here for, right? <laughs> but, like, I, this is, this is like, I need this. I'm, I'm going to be 42 in a couple of weeks. And I need people like you making the music. You, and I needed, I actually not, like, again, like, I needed you <laughs> when I was in my teens. Do you know what I mean? I needed someone like you because even the kind of, you know, the Spice Girls sort mm. of came of came of age when I came of age. But even that music was all kind of about finding, you know, mm. mm -hmm. I'll tell you what I want. But it was it was mm. still about romantic love, even if mm. it was on their terms mm -hmm. or whatever. And I, I was saying this to you before and I'm saying it again, but like I'm really excited that my nine year old daughter will be able to listen to some music that doesn't kind of gaslight her into thinking mm. that her only worth is if she's saved by mm. a boy mm. or a man mm. or, or whoever, mm. you know, or a girl or mm. whatever, but like that the most important thing for her is to fall in yeah. love. A happy ever after thing. Yeah, it's still in me though. I'm like, ah, shit, what am I doing? And if I don't get married and have a kid, have I failed? Like, maybe, but I t I've got too much else to do. And, I, and it was always... The groups of people I was in, it, it always felt like everyone would be like, oh, thank God, she's all right now, if I did that. And then I suppose my just personal journey that I'm still on is like, even if I met someone, my goal's not to be their girlfriend or their wife. Like, mm -hmm. my goal's to be myself and then they can be an additional part of my life sure but like that no one ever said that to me and that, that really works for me and that's how I've managing to have more healthy relationships now and like it's just not at the forefront of my goal every day mm. but god it was because it felt like then everyone then I'd fit in then I'd be like everyone else then people would think there's nothing wrong with me because someone can love me like yeah. it's, I mean, it's a long podcast if I go right into no, but it but I like it, yeah I suppose well, like you've taken that from the record because on Prioritised Pleasure especially I'm going like hang on a minute that doesn't seem fair that like the thing that might complete me or make me accepted by socially um, is the one thing that I'm not that interested in 
finding mm. really yeah. what about all these other things I've done yeah but also there's a lot about making yourself smaller to please other like putting well, yeah. other people's needs in front of yours for me to be someone's nice wife for yeah. a long time I would have had to change a lot about myself <laughs> Well, you see, I, you know, and I, I have to say, and like being really like frank here, like I really thought, like in all through my twenties, I was like, I genuinely, and I, and I feel sort of a bit of shame even admitting this now, but it's, but it's the truth. So, I genuinely was like, when I get a boyfriend mm. or like when someone marries me, it's all going to be okay. Mm-hmm. Mm. I'll stop drinking like I do. I'll mm-hmm. stop using the drugs in the way I do. I will be saved, mm-hmm. and then. <laughs> <laughs> I was lucky enough that my, you know, I did marry someone who accepted me entirely for who I am. And, but I, I, you know, very quickly became clear that no, that was not going to save me, you mm-hmm. know. And I think that, you know, it's all those sort of outside things that we think are going to make us better, but actually we're just brilliant. Yeah. Because we're who we are. It's all in you. All the answers are up to you. It's kind of like, I don't know, I'm working on it, but I'm like, no one, I, the safest pair of hands I can be in is mine. Like, mm. And it's not as lonely as that sounds. Like, yeah, this I've absolutely drummed into me that when I meet someone, everything will be all right. Mm. And I thought one, and I can remember my dad even, like my mum and dad are amazing, but like, I think I had an existential, like, when I was 10 or something, like, what will happen to me when you guys are dead? Mm. And my dad was like, well, by then you'll have your husband and your children. And and, and that ring, I can remember him saying that. And of course he did, you know. (laughs) But now I'm like, ah, shit. (laughs) And all of this is just me slowly over the last five years, I suppose, since I gave up trying to be something I'm not, just grappling with the idea of, like, what does happy ever after look like if it's what I want or what I've created and it's not like all the Disney bullshit you know it's like more ingrained than you think it's really ingrained but I think also it's that trying to be it's bigger than romantic relationships yeah, yeah. I think it's it's all there in the album like I mean I could sit here and just <laughs> like quote to you love your own lyrics <laughs> but you know that guilt of just existing as you are mm. or like one of my favourites is that lyric when I'm buried in the ground I won't be able to make your birthday drinks but I will still feel guilty <laughs> and that just sort of sums up for me like existing as a 41 yeah. year old woman 35 year old yeah. woman sort of all of the kind of angst yeah it's just a constant battle to be like does everyone hate me <laughs> <laughs> and my and unfortunately that coupled with my predisposition to be like I'll do anything to make sure you don't hate me mm. just made my teens and 20s you know pretty miserable and those awful things happened to me because I was just like extreme people pleasing basically well, is the wait, best way to describe it yeah can I ask you I mean you don't have to say like when you say awful things happened because you've spoken about mental health struggles mm-hmm. and obviously you've written about mm-hmm. experiences of assault mm-hmm. and mm-hmm. things because I think this is really key to talking to about what you know when we don't li- I know it sounds so I'm not articulating myself very well at all here. But when we don't, this sounds so corny, but when we don't live lives true to ourselves, yeah. bad shit happens. Yeah, 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 exactly. Oh, and now I see, I mean, it's still ongoing. My, oh, you did that. That shitty thing you did there was because of this. So like, we are all just, and I'm learning, I'm learning compassion for other people as well in this way. Like the more I forgive myself, the more I understand we're just these like, mad blobs that don't know what to do and we're all products of what's happened to us anyway. And like, for the most part, there's no massive right and wrong. I don't know, mm. <laughs> get a bit more on this podcast. But yeah, I... There's no good or bad. We're not, we don't live in a Marvel movie. No. There's not like goodies and bads. I think there are, of course, some, some things that are fundamentally bad. But, <laughs> but am I... I started seeing someone and we were watching uh, Australia's wedding. What's the thing? Married at first sight. Oh, married at first Australia. sight, yeah, yeah. And there was this guy and it was like a brother of one of the girls and he was a really protective brother and he was and he was really sort of the patriarchy incarnate and, and I was like, fuck that guy, a fucking prick. And the person I'm seeing was like, oh, they... They're just being like that because their dad was like that, and they're you know, and he was very like, oh, think about it from their side, and I was like, fuck you, and I really like couldn't bear it. But this is a few like a while ago, and then, but then I realised, so, oh fuck, that's the point, isn't it? And I want to be treated with that sort of compassion, and I've done some weird shit. I've been shitty to people, but it's always come from a place of just desperately trying to feel all right in myself and oh maybe this will work or maybe this is the kind of person I am or 
And I've needed to explore like that. And then, I, God, I'm getting lost here. That's very been very helpful in my healing and realising, like, a lot of the things I feel a lot of shame about are just because I was never accepted as myself anywhere throughout my whole 20s. And I was a full-time musician. Like, my life should have been, like, fabulous and full of creativity, but it was just... I constantly felt bad, wrong, uncool, stupid, you know, all every day, you know. And so it made me seek validation anywhere. <laughs> and you get sort of lazy because it's just so tiring existing that I would be like, you can get validation in some terrible fucking places if, yeah. you, uh, uh, if you need it quick, you know. And yeah, that's, I guess what I mean is like, and now I have a sort of backdated trauma, I guess, from some of things that I happened in my 20s. But I can forgive myself to a certain extent because I'm like, I had no idea and I was just throwing shit at the wall. Like, something's got to make me feel like I belong. None of it did, you know. Mm. <laughs> and, Honestly, and, yeah. when I, listen to that, I find that really moving because that's like yeah. my like the things and the and I I can look back at like my 20s and, and some of my 30s and mm. be like oh my god like sometimes I think of myself as I, I feel like a child like in mm. terms of yeah, yeah. like what you start doing the work on yourself mm. and you go it sort of takes your breath away the positions you put your you willingly yeah. put yourself in yeah because that was all you knew to yeah. to get validation yeah I think it's that and then also there was a nihilistic part of me that was just like I was just so unhappy that mm. I didn't care what happened to me anymore as well which yeah. is now when I you know I could cry now thinking about that because like how dare the world make someone like me feel that disposable but mm. it did it really fucking did and yeah and I'm grateful the, for it in so many ways because it's obviously where I am today and all that bullshit but <laughs> but <laughs> but it is true you know I struggle it's very live laugh lovey and I and I really struggle with that but there's summer in it when you go forgive yourself love yourself accept yourself and then that's the key to everything mm. yeah and I didn't I spent the whole time being like you're a fucking piece of shit and then everyone else was like oh cool you are a piece of shit mm. let me treat you like a piece of shit mm. and around and round we went for yeah. a long time I feel like we were maybe we're living diff you know, yeah. different you know different same life different uh, yeah I think we need to <laughs> have a lunch outside of microphones cause... but also I think me even saying it and people going oh god me I feel like that as well People call me radical. I'm like, fucking hell, that's sad if I'm radical mm. just because I'm saying, oh, I've not always felt all right and I've not always done this well. Mm. <laughs> People need to hear it. But like there's, there's, there's a quote that you, you said, which is like the crowd, now that you're doing this stuff that is, is important and is real and matters to you. There's this beautiful quote I read in an interview where you, you talk about playing live and you say the crowds are as big and depressed and insa <laughs> as insane as me and we're all being too much together and it's created a beautiful feedback loop of love. It's life changing. And that I just thought, oh, yeah, that's what it's all about, isn't yeah. it? It really is. And that's what I'm addicted to now. My band, the, the people in my band, they have their own. Everyone's sort of a front woman as well. Like it. And it's so special and it, in a way that I did it I set out to just be like a pop star right I, I wanted to just be a solo artist didn't want to have to indulge anyone else's ideas I just wanted it to be about me and it has become even just by the people I've met and the, me becoming myself and loved and accepted by myself and therefore other people it's created this like mad wave of like I don't know it's like an experience it's like a it's bigger than a band it's bigger than an artist it's it's a sort of, I think, it's a sort of like live, laugh, love for... People that uh, don't like to say yeah, live, laugh, like love. Yeah, like sarcastic people. <laughs> like, but, uh, but who need to live, laugh, love. Yeah, that's what I think is happening and that's how the cult stars. <laughs> well, you know what, though? I was going to say, I've written this down and I, I really wanted to say this, but like, I think your music is kind of holy. Oh, yeah. Do you know, like, there's the, like, the, the choral stuff, yeah. the... It's, I'm very drawn to that. Yeah. Like there's something really sort of spiritually fucking enlightening about your music. I, <laughs> like I'm you, really wary of being like, yeah. Yeah. I, yeah. Like, I am the Eckhart Tolle <laughs> of, of the recording industry. Well, I'm like, <laughs> it's just really a time sample where prioritised pleasure is just me going like, I got a minute. And um, 
I suppose that is becoming this. Yeah, people say the gigs are sort of spiritual and they are but I, it's me I don't know I don't know I don't know I don't know how to I'm working on this idea because I'm a big Kanye West fan right and obviously like I struggle with the, the things he does and, and says and all that kind of thing but art from the artist and what or not like I'm a huge, he's made some good songs yeah I really think like his art is impeccable and he's obviously very very Christian and I've watched this like Instagram video of him being like God knows he will guide me you know all that sort of language and I was like fuck imagine really believing someone like that it must mm. be quite nice to trust in something beyond you but I am fucking with this idea that the universe gives you what it's going to and even the shit bits are all part of ultimately what's right for mm-hmm. you I know that sounds like know. no I know no you don't you sound like a bit like me when I'm talking to my mates like yeah. the uni- <laughs> like the universe because I think we find it so difficult to talk about God in the way that mm. Kanye West was yeah, yeah. you know like we, we're all like oh no because you know religion well, I've always just been like what do you mean yeah like, and also God God to me is always like when I grew up when I was a little girl God was punishing uh, well exactly you know but this is like when you start then talking about the universe you're like oh no it's loving I'm putting this together very slowly and you're here at the moment I've started to we went on a roller coaster in <laughs> Copenhagen. Such a pop star. Did you go to the Tivoli Gardens? Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. So we were on this roller coaster, and me and the three members of my band that are the thrill seekers, and we'd bought these fucking wristbands, even though we knew we didn't have long enough to go on many roller coasters. So I was like, my life is I'm so impatient. I'm like, look. God, I can't believe it. Like, full of this terror that we'd spent money and we weren't going to get more than one ride out of it. Like a buffet. Oh, yeah, don't talk to me about buffets. <laughs> Fucking hell, that's a whole other thing for me. I'd love to go to a buffet alone, you know? When you know when you see someone at a buffet, like a hotel buffet yeah. in the morning and they're just having, like, a yogurt and some yeah. prunes. Yeah. And you're like, you're not my person. No, 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 exactly. <laughs> you're not similar. part of my tribe. <laughs> so anyway, we're there like, sure, and the queue was taking forever the queue was taking forever and then we let these two guys go in front of us because he wanted to go in front with his mate anyway long You're story other people's needs in long front of story oh, God, that's another fucking problem i have long story long we wait so long we go on it it's great we decide to cut our losses just get back in the queue to just go on the same roller coaster because we could not afford to lose any more time we let another person go in front of us and we get back up there and we are at the front of the roller coaster which is a whole different ball game oh, wow. and I was like oh my god that's the universe <laughs> sorry I can't believe I'm gonna and I'm sat strapped into this roller coaster and we're waiting to go and my feet are dangling and I'm thinking about Kanye I'm thinking about <laughs> the way that today has gone not to plan it's not ideal I was genuinely gutted <laughs> as the minutes rolled by that I wasn't going to get on a roller coaster as many times as I wanted to that day but it all led us to being at the front which is so much better and we Steve my sound guy we were with he was like I've never been at front of a roller coaster before and we were like and now's the day and, and I realised oh my god I am religious I'm, and what I practice is believing in things happening for a reason it's, it's it's spiritual. I think I'm starting to figure that out. And I think now, unfortunately, I've got this vehicle, which is my burgeoning music career, <laughs> to really plough this idea I home. think maybe you are the second coming. I think maybe I am. Yeah. I saw Rylan at Mighty Hoopla and I had a few <laughs> drinks and I told him he was the second coming. But maybe I, listen, I'm the third. <laughs> I think the planet could do worse than you and Rylan I, honestly, as the second and third coming. I think it might be the case, but I need to think about it a lot more. We need to put this more into the universe. I know. Like, I think if we Gen- put it out, manifest it. <laughs> I know. I'm, uh, I know I've not had this. I'm not the person who's had the idea that the universe is sending you where it's meant to. I know that. <laughs> but we, no, but it's like, there's an amazing moment where you get it. You well, hear it. it in and go, oh. It just really helps with the shit bits. Because mm. there's so many shit bits when you're alive. I think I was sort of brought up to be like, everything's lovely, mm-hmm. nothing is bad. And I think my, a lot of my 20s was like, oh my God, loads of this is bad. <laughs> no this is not what I was told. But and I've got to smile through it and, and make it work. Like, and be grateful. Oh God, I couldn't. And I fared very badly at that. <laughs> <laughs> because, you know, one of the songs you're like, the, the, you were told if you didn't have this job, you'd be working in McDonald's. Oh man. So I got a lot, I knew when, so that, that verse is all verbatim things men have said to me in the industry, which is fine. And I would say them without comment, really. I'm not saying anyone's a bastard or whatever. That's up to you to decide if they are. But it was just more like, that is a little teaspoon of mm. the things that have been said to me over the years. And 
that was a tour manager who we had who I mean he was a sexist bastard you know like ultimately but that stealth way where you kind of don't you can't have a go at them you can't be like how dare you say that mm. to me because everyone would be like what's wrong with you what are you on about you know what I mean it's it's a specific type of micro sexism and you know when you tour with somebody it's long and you, you do a lot of fucking talking and sitting and he pretty consistently would say things and the lads wouldn't say anything because to the untrained ear that it's not bad you know mm. and I was very ill on one of these tours and I was sick of touring like Europe and playing to like 50 people and you know I was just sick of it and he was like you know if you weren't doing this you'd be working at McDonald's to like cheer up and get on with it and I was like what? <laughs> like that's so there's so many things wrong with that firstly like I'd work in fucking McDonald's mm. mate like that's no problem for me if I was treated better than I am right now you yeah. know like yeah loads of that loads of that the microaggressions <laughs> the sort of emotional verbal sort of abuse mm. that's well, I think we were talking about this before maybe it was when we were pressing record I can't remember but like that's the next I feel like the next mm. sort of post me too where we're all going hmm hang on yeah so funny well, like, I find it very difficult at the minute because it there's that like oh you can't say anything anymore angle and also like we joke like <laughs> I met a quite a famous rock star and we were like oh he wasn't pervy enough if you were <laughs> we were joking but you're like, like I'm operating this was weird... he a bit pervy no not at all and I was like damn it I thought I mean, he'd be pervy with it, me who, I can't so honestly I... would legally have to take it out <laughs> But could bit... you say it and we'll bleep it out? <laughs> <laughs> I'll tell you after. But no, no, he was just lovely. And I was like, in a way, this is another weird thing for me to start saying in a podcast. But Were you upset that he wasn't perfect? No, it's a joke. It's, that's a joke. But like, No, no, but that's, the, that's a weird reaction. But this is what I'm... 80, I was born in 86 and no one... Everyone's terrified of me now, which is lovely. But like, <laughs> it means I get no... You know, no one says anything complimentary to me and I, no one asks me out anymore. <laughs> it's like that. And I'm like, that's what I've campaigned for. And now I'm like, because I'm so fucked up from society, I'm like, does that mean I'm not hot now? Yes, yeah. And uh, and so, th and then that's another thing I'm working on. Like, oh, I'm not, my validation has to come from that. And I'm making this big song and dance about it. If you do that, <laughs> if you've complimented me, I'm like, fuck you for complimenting me. But then by the cold light of moon, <laughs> and I took myself into bed going, ah, fuck, have I fucked up here? Because now no one dares come near me. And But then that's a whole new thing to traverse, isn't it? Because that's not fair. But also that's the, all we know. Mm. I wonder if Gen Z is... <laughs> understand it a bit more I'm this horrible mix of like a fucking yeah pre me to idea of validation but also like me as an actual person feels all the anger and all the things that, yeah, I, that yeah. I talk about and it sort of leaves me a bit like oh, I don't know confused now. it's just confusing but I also think it's it's an exciting new thing to think through and, and look at and why does yeah, there's this, like, the complicity I had in the patriarchy is where I'm at. I like mm. realising that and stopping doing that. Mm. But it does, and, and now I'm quite interested in where it does leave you. Mm. We'll find out. Not sure yet. <laughs> I think you're hot and amazing and Thank I'd you. ask you out. Thank you. But, uh, but I've married. No. That doesn't... Matter. would be really complicated. <laughs> it's a conversation to be had. No, OK. No, exactly, yeah. I mean, funny, I'm sure it? he would... Yeah. No, but it is... But, like, no, you see, I just feel like I needed to... <laughs> I just feel like I needed to validate you. No, I know. It's okay, good, no, good. But it's OK, love. But also, I know I am fit. It's fine. You are. Okay. You are. You're fantastic. <laughs> and, like, any man or woman would be lucky to have I know, you. I know. No, I'm fine. I'm like, plenty... I'm, 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 no, no problems. But, like, it's just... <laughs> Oh, here we go. I'm very busy as well, to be honest. You don't even time to have time to do your laundry. No, I don't. And no, I've got plenty. No, that's fine. But it, it's just this weird, again, very artistically fruitful place to go, oh, when the when the wolf whistles stop, because I've asked them to, where does that leave you? But also, when you're not being, like, holy, mm. when the music is not holy, <laughs> when the music is not, like, a spiritual, religious experience. Actually, before I get to that, I want to tell you that yesterday... 
uh, when I sent you a message on Instagram, I had come out of... You see, I can't wait for you to go through the menopause and make an album about the menopause. <laughs> so I'm I'm going through early menopause and it's the hormones are everywhere and oh, it's horrible no, and we no. can't get the, not the thing right. And I went mm. to the hospital to get my blood taken and they said it will be five days and I was like what and I started crying and I didn't stop crying for two hours and I then I put on in the car on the way back I put on the 345 and it was like you were there holding me Mm. but it was like I was like all that inner child stuff Mm, like I was I was I was this this doesn't have to stay in the podcast by the way (laughs) but it was like that thing of like looking after yourself and it was a really precious a helpful moment oh, there so thank you you're so welcome thanks for that <laughs> when I was doing it and we did that bit where I hug myself in the video I was like it's very on the nose this it's very it's... very direct and maybe I could make it more abstract and I thought well no put it in and that the way that has connected and, and like again I was three four five I was like I want to write a love song to me you know yeah. and it's as simple as that and yeah, yeah I'll it. hold you on my back yeah, yeah but it is all that stuff of looking you know essentially it's fantastic. Well, you will always sort it out. Like, you will always find a way. And that that's the main thing I've learned is, like, I can fucking do anything. I can handle anything. You know, And, and all of this is this fear that I can't. But I know mm. that I can. So stride on into life and see what happens. And also, like, <laughs> you'll be all right, you that know? compassion you spoke about, like, yeah. having compassion for those bits of you from the past that I'm just going, it's all right, I'm here now. I don't do, I, you know, that's a, I'm a very much at the start of that now. Because the thing is in therapy, right? You like firefight and then you can like look at the house, right? <laughs> and like the house, we've still, you know, there's so many fucking fires we had to put out because I was a nervous fucking wreck, you know, mm. and no one had ever helped me really. And so now I, you know, I'm at the point where there's a few things that I've got in hand in my head, but and we're starting to go like, oh, maybe, you know, forgiving this person I was at 20, whatever, might unlock some of the shit that's still here Mm. (laughs) I don't know it's it's long in it but that's my other thing in the 345 I'm like I used to think there was a top of the mountain where you become whole and happy and done and realising I'm never done you're never ever done you always just keep going and yeah trudging yeah man or skipping sometimes I'm like I wake up and put the backpack on and I've got my sticks and I'm like hiking for (laughs) you know and I'm loving it but yeah, sometimes it is a trudge and like dragging. Yeah, dra- dragging yeah, and a long sit around. down. <laughs> a long sit down on a rock for a bit. But yeah, I yeah, well, these metaphors that feel sort of yeah on the nose and a bit uh, basic. They work for me. They really work. Even when I'm like head in hands, can't fucking do this. I'm like, uh, but put your I, backpack on. <laughs> put your backpack on. Get on with it, love. <laughs> but the spiritual stuff. But the thing is, I was gonna say when you're not being sort of when it isn't like this kind of life-affirming moment music you also the other thing about it is that it's very fucking funny (laughs) (laughs) can't help it like and i love that i love that you can deliver so that it's not like the lyrics like the the moody like i kind of just quote back some more lyrics you're like i know i wrote them friday (laughs) uh sexting you at the mental health talk seems (laughs) counterproductive to be fair in the studio i was like i can't do this (laughs) i'd written that in a note and i was I, I was like, oh, that's fucking funny. It's really, it's really And brilliant. I didn't think I'd get it in. I also, um, hobbies too, I say, it's basically about saying like, I'll come over, but only if I've got enough time. And that again, I was like, I can't write a whole song about like having a fuck buddy, <laughs> but only if I can be bothered because I'm a very busy woman. <laughs> and, I, and they're both of things, these things made it. But again, that was because nothing mattered anymore. I nearly got dropped, you know what I mean? Like on the first record, it was a bit like, might not be able to do this much longer. So Prioritised Pleasure was made with a like, fuck it. Compliments, button. please. You nearly got dropped. Yeah, it just didn't, didn't do that well, you know. There's and, a song on that, which I fucking love monster yes yeah justice for monster (laughs) that's one of the first ones i wrote as solo it's like the most glorious fucking upbeat pop song like and then you listen to the lyrics (laughs) and you're like and i love that that you've spoken about that kind of trojan horse thing yeah it's just brilliant. Thank you. I'm very talented. Uh, well, I'm very talented. I don't know what to tell you, love. And then, but you are so talented. You've just written. Like, you've just written. It's okay. I've touched your knee. I liked knee. it. Yeah. Um, <laughs> you've written the muse, the soundtrack uh-huh. to. We had Prima Fasci. Fasci. This <laughs> it's conflicting reports. Prima Fasci, I believe, is the official way to say it. The production 
it seems to be calling it prima facie. Right. Because that's a bit sexier, as, <laughs> a bit more zhuzh about it <laughs> than fucky, which is so not very fucky, nice, is it? Which sounds a bit... But you can call it in a prima facie is what prima I've facie. been doing. Okay, so anyway, it's a, it's a really, it's been like this amazing theatre production starring Jodie Comer. Mm-hmm. So amazing that it is, it's about to go to Broadway. Mm-hmm. Just been announced. It's going, you, you are, your music is going to Broadway. I know, it's cool, isn't it? I wonder if I get to go. I think you should. I hope so. I think, well, this, 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 this seeks into our musical. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Your love of musical (laughs) theatre but you posted about this this morning on Instagram there's a song on it you say that it took you 10 seconds to write and you think that it would probably be your most successful song were it to be released yeah which kind of brings us back really to the central problem in pop music nowadays I think which is can you talk me through that song because it's (laughs) it's basically a guy singing about how I love you just as you are without your makeup on and you know all sort of like manic pixie dream girl and kind Mm -hmm. of and it's just it's really fucking funny (laughs) Without naming any artists that might be signed by the same record label as you. (laughs) No, it's just, look, it's still alive and well, isn't it? It's even alive and well in female-driven pop music. Like, remember that um, All About Our Bass song? And it's like, and then she, you know, he'll like you if you're not thin, basically, Mm. that was. And then she did another song about, like, oh, he'll marry you if... That's all, you know, like, it's still, that's in recent memory that that was the angle. Sorry, I maybe don't put that in. <laughs> but um, I just fucking hated that shit. Do you know what I mean? Like, but male fronted, sensitive uh, <laughs> pop. I'm very fascinated. It's a category. By. It's I am a fascinated genre, by it. Isn't it. Because I've always been a bit like, I could piss out on my ass in 10 seconds and probably be more successful than me trying to do this, you know, overwrought, thought through art pop. <laughs> and these guys with guitars. Oh, it's very difficult to talk about, isn't it, without never... getting beef? But, like, yeah, it's just that, like, the idea of... The... <laughs> if it, you would never have a female. Just, like, I'll say it because mm, you can't, no. right? Okay. <laughs> there will never be a female version of Ed Sheeran or Lewis Capaldi. Like, you couldn't have it. it, it... It's what I I often think, like, Ed Sheeran and Lewis Capaldi and people, artists like that and all the One Direction lads and, and stuff... They get to sit in a studio and write songs about like, loving girls or <laughs> loving their partner or or doing stuff. I and I feel like women are female artists and non-binary artists have to sit and go all this fucking trauma, all this, mm. all these. I'm not saying men don't have trauma. Fucking hell, this is hard, isn't it? Don't write me letters. <laughs> don't send me texts. <laughs> I feel like what would happen if I just got to sing about something nice. And I can't. I, what would happen if I got to do interviews about the music? Uh, you know, not not saying I don't want to do it. No, no, no. But I never talk about writing music. I never talk about instrumentation because I've got to talk about everything else, you know. Anyway, the Prima Paki song comes from that place. Like, what, 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 what do those sort of artists get to write about? And I'm not calling anyone out, but a lot of it is this, like, I just love you when you're on the sofa in your tracksuit. <laughs> and they think that's the most overblown feminist statement in the world, and they're being really edgy, and <laughs> they're the crackpot scientists that <laughs> have had this thought for the first time that women aren't... They don't need to be done up for me to fancy them. And I'm like, <laughs> I just hate it. I've always hated it. I'm My patient zero narcissistic abusive boyfriend I remember him saying you know he liked me without less makeup and me and me being like oh he likes me just for me oh my god and it's so the fucking point is uh, what I can do what I want and it's none of your business (laughs) but it took me a long time to realize that saying you look better without makeup is a fucking uh, like it's so grim Uh, so anyway the song it's really grim isn't it yeah but, but I guess it's hard for some men to re- understand that. It's just why. like, just don't, just don't, just shut the fuck up and don't, not you. Yeah. Not yeah. And like, don't talk. It's Louisa, who's the producer, who's sitting and this was telling me earlier how a man had told her that you, you look like your, your arms are burnt or something. And I was like, did you ask him? Why doesn't he yeah. fuck off? Yeah. There's something in it. I mean, maybe I'm going too far with it, but no, yeah, I just don't want to. I don't know, but it's so much still in in that sort of music comes down to the guy seeing something in the girl that others wouldn't see. Mm. And I do think that's a sort of manipulation tactic. It's totally. <laughs> so anyway, I wrote this song. It's called Perfect To Me. And he's like, 
he loves her best just in the morning when she's just woken up. He loves it when she's got no makeup on, in her slim fit white tee and low slung ripped jeans. <laughs> that's when you're perfect to me because they're always it's always slim fit. You know, it's all no. And they're in the videos, always fucking skinny. It's as always well. like yeah, yeah. a supermodel with no makeup on. Yeah, and you're, like, you're still oh, you're still yeah. using Gigi Hadid. Yeah. <laughs> In That's this video. A, like uh, write a song about loving a, a woman with a f- herpes cold sore breakout, you know? Like that's what I need. Or when she's not done her chin hairs. Like that's when I'm vulnerable. Like fucking you. hell. When yeah. you haven't shaved yeah. your beard. Yeah. yeah. When the epilator has run out of steam, you know? You just can't be fucked because you quite love like well, yeah. just sort of stroking them. Or I've just forgot because I'm so busy being a successful pop art pop artist. <laughs> anyway, it was that. Uh, and then I really enjoyed myself in the second verse is about how he's in a band and he can get her to come on the tour bus because that's also <laughs> been a theme of my life is like male musicians that have always been doing better than me being like come on kid I'll take you on the bus and I'm like that's why I'm so driven because I'm like you can drive my bus now <laughs> <laughs> is how I was what but, my goal is well let's talk about the instrumentation and the oh, no no sorry no but as you are <laughs> like you're seriously fucking talented mm. 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 like the, the, also there's the music to the prima facie or whatever it's it, there's a lot there there's I'm not I mean I, listen I'm not a music critic but you're too clever I think for the no, for the music nightmare. industry well yeah I am and no I'm offense. not I also know how to <laughs> how to um, <laughs> I know how to delegate though and to yeah who how to find what I need and and also like I did Prima with a producer called Taylor Sky who is amazing and sat with him and I knew every single part of it was in my mind I was like I need this sound and you know I could have only made it because he could hear me and find the sound you know what I mean because I've never got savvy on computers <laughs> I still can't drive a fucking car. Do you know what I mean? I'm really? not that clever. Not? Nah, man. Neither can I. No, Have you ever had a lesson? Late. Yeah, I had like 15. I never got any better. I've never had a lesson. Can't do it. It's hard. It's too hard. I don't understand how you ever on cam. <laughs> so anyway, yeah, I am really clever and smart and it is all in my head, but I do, you know, no well, man is an island. <laughs> I, do, I need, you know, I need someone to drive me to the studio where someone who knows how to work Ableton is. So it's, it is slowly my career and stuff. This is all... I'm trying to find, but it's been so hard to find a team of people that are willing to listen to a woman and take, let her not, you know, not want fucking credit for it. Or, you know, mm. like it, it's been a long time, done a lot of things where people think it's not me. Think I don't think people think I wrote the songs in Slow Club. We've had people think Galps writes the songs in Self Esteem, who's my, she plays guitar and bass and she's a lesbian with a short haircut. Mm-hmm. And therefore, oh, so, so whoever's got the shortest, most masculine haircut maybe wrote the songs. Yeah, like, it was yeah, like, yeah. you're fucking, the patriarchy is alive and well. Mm-hmm. It just is what it is though. I, I have this, when I was a kid, I remember vividly, like every time the teacher asked a question, I'd be like, like my hand was up like please pick me and since having I've done gigs and jobs where I've like done drama classes for kids and things like that and you don't pick that kid <laughs> you know I understand now that I was the annoying kid who always wanted to be, wanted <laughs> and so they wouldn't pick me and they'd ask someone else and I remember this existential sort of moment going you know so the answer was red and they picked someone else and they said red and I was going to say red. I realised like, oh, all that matters is that I was going to say red. It doesn't matter that no, <laughs> that I didn't get asked. And I have to come back and I'm like, hand up in class theory, you yeah, know, yeah. with all of this. Like, it's more important that it exists than me getting all the credit. Though I love to get the credit because I fucking deserve the credit. <laughs> you really do. You really do. And I think what you're doing is, and you're without blowing smoke up your ass but I'm going to anyway like it's really important and it's fun as well and that's and all the best things are important and fun yeah I think so I just honestly it got to in the band I just had to go I couldn't do it anymore and it did I made my life as small as possible when I moved out of London I actually did a job as a fairy in a panto was there anyone like who else was in the panto is it actually quite um do you know Glamru the drag queen <laughs> no I don't. they were the sort of evil queen in it and and me sounds and, good me and amru were like <laughs> and now amru's like in la literally like thriving and i'm thriving it's fine the back end of the cow in that panto is now one of the leads in mamma mia it was like a it was a fruitful year for that panto for sure. that's another podcast but i 
yeah, I just I just set myself up for failure. Really, I was just like, but but failure was better than carrying on just playing a part in someone else's band. You know, mm. it essentially is. It. And and I went. Now I see a one way ticket to kind of very bad mental health is is not being yourself ever. And that's what I don't know. Like I was never allowed to be myself ever. And I went mad for it, you know. Mm. And I think society and and uh, expectation and what should you one should do is the, the biggest problem, <laughs> you know. Oh, yeah, yeah for, for certainly a lot of women, but you know, obviously anyone. But I think it's a very rife issue <laughs> if you're a woman born in the eighties or before to be like sorry please excuse me do you mm. mind if like it was just I don't know like that's a really good album title <laughs> so, sorry right, please yeah. excuse me do you mind if yeah I I'm exist. still like that I'm still like that but I also but then there's there's songs and stage and stuff that's where I don't have to do it I think I think that, that's what it sounds and seems like it is people can't believe how like uh, I am because <laughs> it seems like I'm not but on stage no one can get me you know in the studio no one can get me I'm so grateful for what you do oh, and for you existing <laughs> and thank you Rebecca. thank you no before you go please follow Mad World on your podcast app to make sure you never miss an episode and if you feel like it leave us a rating and a review I love to read what you think about the shows and also see your guest suggestions Mad World is all about helping our listeners and I love hearing from you the Telegraph also let me loose in column form. So if you'd like to hear even more from me, head to telegraph.co.uk forward slash madworld and you can get your first 30 days access to the website completely free. If you've been affected by anything we've talked about in our podcast today, the following organisations offer free and confidential support over the phone. The Samaritans can be reached 24 hours a day, seven days a week on 116 123. Or you can contact the mental health charity Mind for advice on a range of mental health issues. Their phone number is 0300 123 3393. That's 0300 123 3393. They're accessible 9am to 5pm, Monday to Friday, excluding bank holidays. There's also Young Minds who provide support if you're a parent or a carer worried about a child's welfare. They're on 0808 802 5544. That's 0808 802 5544. If you prefer tech support, Shout is a 24 7 UK crisis tech service available for times when people feel they need immediate support. By texting Shout to 85258, you will be put in touch with a trained crisis volunteer who will chat to you via text. And importantly, please remember this. You are not alone.